In the long, long ago, when times were hard, and everyone had to work all day and every day just to be able to keep themselves alive, there was no room anywhere for an animal who was too small or too scrawny to pull a plow or drive the water wheel. If he could not give wool, like the sheep, then he was of no use. Ah, stupid creature. Is there nothing you can do? I have no time for weaklings. Be off with you. Poor little Burrow. No matter how willing he was, or how hard he tried, if he couldn't do the work, he was just not wanted. Is it so strange to wonder why? Although I try and try and try, I cannot find a place to stay or even earn a sheaf of hay. Can it be because I'm so small that no one needs me, no one at all? If I were a stallion, a goat, or a camel, I'd be needed and fed every day. But because I'm a burrow, a little brown burrow, no one cares if I go or I stay. But when I'm bigger and stronger, I know there'll be plenty of places for me to go. There'll be work to do, a friend of my own. And I'll never again be alone. I have an owner to whom I'll belong. Oh, how do I get to be big and strong? I'm not a stallion, a goat, or a camel, and I want to be needed each day. I'm only a burrow, a little brown burrow. Does no one care? Surely somewhere amongst that hustle and bustle would be water and food and, and who knows, maybe even a kind word. Miserable creature. You don't belong here. Shoo! Get out of here, you flea-ridden midget. This certainly didn't look like the friendly kind of place he'd been hoping for. Come on, little Burrow. There's room here. <laughs> Greedy bunch. There's plenty there for this little Burrow. <laughs> he will just have to wait until we're finished. <laughs> we come first. <laughs> it was all very well for them to take their time. They got water every day. But the little brown burrow hadn't had a drink for such a long time, and... Oh, he was so thirsty. Uh, oh. Oh. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Uh... Ahmed Akbar Ben Hashmid Omar Baba the Third. Uh, but you can call me Omar. Thanks, Omar. Uh, I say, do you mind... Oh. Oh. Uh, water and I are not the best of friends. Sorry, Omar. No matter. Gotta go now. Things to do, things to see. Uh... The day was finally drawing to a close, and the caravan began to settle down for the night. It had been a long, hard day for the little burrow. He was becoming very, very tired. May I stay here for the night? You? You are a donkey. We do not share our tent with donkeys. Be off with you. Please, may I stay here 
for the night? <laughs> Stay with us? You are nothing but an underground donkey. An ass. <laughs> A jackass. Shoo! Be off with you. What's this? A mangy donkey? Go away. There's no room here for a mangy donkey. <laughs> mangy donkey, mangy donkey. Ah, be off, you flea-ridden midget, before I skin you alive. <laughs> Frightened, exhausted, and feeling very much alone, the little brown burrow wandered into the dark, forbidding hills. inconvenience you, but it's beginning to get rather wet here. As the storm raged on, the little burrow's heart swelled with happiness as he snuggled beside Omar. At last, he had found a friend. The next morning, as the sun broke brilliantly over the hills, the magic of the rain began its work on the dry desert. The rain has stopped, the storms pass by. A rainbow has joined the earth to the sky. The burrow is prancing, <laughs> enjoying with glee. Reflections the pools make, enchanting to see. The ants are teaching each other to swim. The beetles are marching. Ooh, what a din. The spider is busy. Shining her web, the lazy lizard has left his bed. Listen to how they chatter away as they run and they flash on this lovely day. The snake has slithered out of its lair. Blossoms blooming everywhere. All around us, the world's in a spin. With every creature joining in. Today's a day to be happy and gay. It's a day to remember. What a glorious day. It's a lovely day. Omar and the little brown burrow trudged along behind the caravan, not knowing where they were going. At long last, the caravan halted. Come here, then, nice little donkey. I won't hurt you. <laughs> Tell me, what do you plan to do with that poor excuse of an animal? There's not much to recommend the scraggly little creature, but my beast has gone lame. And this one will have to take some of the load. Oh, at last. Someone realized how useful he could be. Who cared if he wasn't a stallion or a camel? I can work just as hard as the others. You wait and see. 
That's the spirit. It's all a matter of attitude. You show them. You great big lolloping water humps. You'll be sorry picking on a little burrow like that. <laughs> Remember, he who laughs last, laughs longest. <laughs> <laughs> As the sun rose higher in the sky, the little burrow's hopes rose too. Maybe, he thought, maybe this is where I belong. And never again will people call me useless. Keep it up. Show them what you're made of. Only 100 more miles to go. Or, uh, I mean, uh, uh, 10. Or, or maybe it's uh, uh, two. Well, fame and fortune await us. Never say you can't, my friend. Never say you're through. You'll never reach your goals in life till you change your attitude. It's all a matter of attitude. It's how you think and plan. It's all a matter of attitude that makes you say, I can't. You've got to keep a stiff upper lip and hold your head up high. You've got to keep your eyes up front and never, never cry. It's all a matter of attitude. It's how you think and plan. It's all a matter of attitude that makes you say, I can. If you follow my advice, my friend, success will come, you'll see. You'll be rich and famous, wanted too, and happy as can be. It's all a matter of attitude, it's how you think and plan. It's all a matter of attitude, what makes you say, I can. When the sun was low on the horizon, the caravan stopped for the night. Oh, the burro was tired, but very happy and very proud to have done a useful day's work. They've tethered me, Omar. Do you know what that means? It means they want me to stay. They actually want me. And why shouldn't they? You did very well. I'm proud of you. Hmm. <laughs> Smells like supper's being served. Uh, is there anything you need before I go? I, um, I could do with a drink of water, uh, if it's not too much trouble. A friend in need is a friend indeed. No trouble at all. No trouble at... Water? Uh, did you say water? If you don't mind. Ugh, I hate water. Let me see. What should I put the water in? Aha! That'll do the trick. <laughs> I knew I'd have trouble with the water. <laughs> water and I just don't agree. But where there's a will, there's a way. Phew, didn't smell a drop that time. Burrow, Burrow, where are you? Oh no, he's gotta be here somewhere. Where is he? What's happened to my friend? Uh, gone to the bone heap uh, where he belongs, no doubt. Good riddance, sci fi <laughs> Did anyone see him leave? Did he run away? Was he stolen? Uh, should we tell him, do you think? Tell me what? Tell me what? Of uh, the wicked-looking man who dragged him off. Wicked man? What wicked man? I've got to find him. He's my friend. <laughs> The little brown burrow had not run away, neither had he been stolen, as Omar feared. He'd been traded for a sack of dates and couldn't believe his good fortune. During the next few days, people from all over saw the sign and came to inspect the little brown burrow. But no one was interested in such a small animal. You call that a donkey? You might as well try hitching up a flea. Your eyes must be getting weak, friend, if you think that thing will pass as a donkey. Why, I wouldn't give that stable room. They told me you were strong. 
but you're just a heap of bones, you pitiful excuse for a donkey. I am not Tomorrow a you go to the market, and if I can't get at least one piece of silver for you, then I'll feed you to the dogs. Poor little Bolo. The next morning was cold, and the burro sensed that winter wasn't far away. <sighs> it's a chilly morning. Come on, you wretch. Come on. Let's hope I can find some fool at the market who's willing to buy you. Come on. Come on, you bag of bones. We've got to go to the market. And so the little burrow was led through the streets of a strange town. The sights and sounds made his head spin. For it was the time of the annual tax collection, and people had gathered from far and wide. There were magicians here and acrobats, peddlers and storytellers, merchants selling candied fruit and sweet wine, and everywhere goods were being bought and sold. I have just been sold for 100 pieces of silver. <laughs> I have been bought by a prince and will wear a saddle of gold and silver. Does anybody wish to buy this beautiful beast of burden? If ever a creature could do a good day's work, it is this powerful little animal. <laughs> Just look at this fine, sturdy donkey. Come, friends. Can you not buy for a bargain? I will buy the little brown burrow. For the last time, does anybody want this beautiful... Did you say you wanted him? Yes, I did. I will pay one piece of silver. What? You offer me only one piece of silver for this beautiful animal? See how sturdy he is. Did you ever see such strong legs or such a magnificent head? Why, I wouldn't dream of selling him for less than ten pieces of silver. One piece of silver is all I have. <laughs> Come now, you must have another piece tucked away somewhere. Under your belt, maybe, or inside your sandal. <gasps> all right, then. All right, I'll make a gift of him. Sold for one piece of silver. <laughs> the man's touch was gentle, and the little brown burrow felt strangely calm. The night was very cold, but the little brown burrow felt warm and secure inside. He had been through so much in the past few days that he'd almost given up hoping that he would ever be needed or wanted. How I wish Omar were here. Ah, oh, at last I found you. You've no idea the worry and trouble I've been through. But, but tell me, are you all right? Have you been treated well? I've been bought for one piece of silver. A whole piece of silver? Well, didn't I tell you? All things come to those who wait. It's all a bad attitude. Uh, but listen, I found another caravan going south towards the coast. We can travel together and maybe reach the fabled land of Cathay. What do you say, little burrow? No, I... I don't think I should go, Omar. Think of the things we could do, the things we could see. Can you imagine the things we'd see if we should go to cafe? Can you imagine the things we'd do and the fun we'd have each day? We'd see mountains and rivers, princes and kings, and maybe a palace or two. We travel in splendor, eat foods that delight, and dance till the whole day is through. Can you imagine the things we'd see if we should go to cafe? Can you imagine the things we'd do 
and the fun we have each day. Oh, Omar, you make it sound such fun, but I can't go. What? You don't want to go? I can't explain it, but I feel I ought to stay, that this is where I belong. You've been such a good friend to me, my only friend. Why don't you stay here with me? Brr, too cold. Too cold for me. Besides, travel's in my blood. I've itchy feet, you know, itchy feet. I'm off to the warmth and sunshine of far-off lands. Nothing venture, nothing gain. Goodbye, Omar. I'll miss you. Poor Omar. He too was lonely. He'd never had a real friend before. But Omar felt that old itch urging him on. Hello, little friend. And how are you this morning? Here. This should keep you warm. We've a long journey ahead of us. And so it was that one night long, long ago, in a lowly stable in Bethlehem, a little child was born. And there were abiding in the fields shepherds, and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And three wise men came out of the east, and when they saw the child, they fell down and worshipped him, offering gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And had you been there on that night of nights, you'd have seen, standing proudly in a corner, a little brown burrow. <laughs> 